Today we're going to be talking about a touch of Jen. And I got to censor that photo because booties. I walked into Barnes & Noble thinking that this is going to be a fantastic book. However, well, first let's just kind of spill the tea. Also is going to have to warrant a big fat spoiler alert. Because I am going to be... <laughs> ruining the plot of the book for those who actually still want to read it. When I read the sleeve, it sounded very promising. However, as I began to actually read the story, uh, please don't watch the video any further until you read it. For those of you who were thinking about reading it because of the interesting cover of Promise, <laughs> let me ruin it for you. The suburban couple's name is Remy and Alicia, who are in a city and living in an apartment together. Cool. Okay. So I'm assuming these two are the ones who are going to be obsessive and stalk Jen. Jen is kind of like the modern Instagrammer. Everybody wants to follow her. They adore her posts. They adore her in general. And she's got a fake internet sona of being this positive, bubbly person. Well, behind the scenes, that's not so much the case. The couple is constantly checking their phone. And when I say constantly, I mean like as soon as she posts a photo, they get a ping on their phone and they are both whipping out their phones and looking at the posts. They even will be sitting on the couch together and get this notification that Jen's posted another awesome Instagram photo of living her life, hashtag best of Jen. From there, essentially go and critique every little detail about the photo. And I mean, that's fine. The story is being set up for stalker story. And that's what grabbed me in the first few chapters. However, the character development of these couples, it's just so flat and boring. Before Alicia moved in, Remy actually had a roommate named Jake. So Jake's also in the picture. Alicia and Remy are like kind of keeping their life a secret and obviously they don't share this with Jake. They hate that. They hate everything! Thing. And just the dialogue of them judging everybody, I don't know, it's super like bitchy and annoying and it's just constant. That's fine, you're trying to like make your characters quirky, cool, but like, <sighs> they're just like being snarky, but everybody else around them takes that snarkiness and just accepts it. Nobody like calls them out on their shit like, these two are just bottomless pits of despair and misery and apparently also the character Remy, our main character, knew Jen. They used to work in like a old hostessing, busboy kind of position job. So in order to tie it in with the premise of this plot for them to get closer to Jen, you would think it'd be a stalker story of them literally like couple stalking her. He gets invited on a trip, not by Jen really, she was just kind of like, hey, if you guys want to come to uh, the beach and like learn how to surf, that's cool, that's what we're doing. And then they both, because of their obsession, are like, yes, we can get closer to her. No. Essentially, it's Remy trying to learn how to surf and failing, and then being mad about failing, and then ironically not liking Jen's boyfriend, holy cow, big surprise. And they're in a van with like these pretentious friends of Jen, and none of them are relatable. So, during that whole like 200 page of them being in the vacation home, Remy hears something outside. Apparently, Alicia sleepwalks. And when she does this, she like goes into the kitchen and just nom 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 and <laughs> touches her one night like with her hands around Jen's throat and Jen like wakes everybody up and is like, oh my god, she tried to kill me. The normal reaction of stay the hell away from me. And Alicia's over here like, but why? I love you. I want to be friends. And Jen's like, no, uh, you're so weird. You tried to kill me. 
uh, I don't know, everybody else is like, Jen, stop being a dick. And Jen's like, what the f***? Even her boyfriend, Horace, yes, Horace, was like, Jen, you're being overreactive. Like, what? So, like, your girlfriend was being choked, and you're just like, girl, chill. There's a moment in the book where Alicia was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to hang out with the girls. And Remy's like, I've got a concussion. I'm going to stay behind. And again, there was no interest from Jen to Remy. Remy obviously is like obsessed with her. But so now all of a sudden when she's taking care of him, he's interesting. Even though the whole book, she's like, you're super weird. You're a creep. You're annoying. Like, and Remy's like, oh no, I've dreamed about this moment all my life. Yes. But then he's like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Not because of Alicia or any moral high ground he has, but just because he's like, I've got a concussion and I want to remember it because what if I don't remember it because of my concussion? So he's like, get off me. They hear like scratching, mainly Remy. And Remy like follows the sound and sees like a mysterious weird creature that's like next to the pool. And, oh, I really hope this isn't going to like play into something weird. It does. It plays into something weird later on. After the whole getting invited on the trip thing, that's kind of where the book went downhill. It's just a very non-flow developmental state for all the characters. And they, like, believe in these weird mantras. Like, yes, they're, like, guru, like, believe in yourself and open your mind to the cosmos and let life happen because things will come to you in the no. end. I mean, okay, there are also people out there that are like that, but I mean, this one girl's so pretentious about it. It's just, her name's Carla, and she, like, turns me off to the whole thing. Remy sees Horace, the new boyfriend, as an obstacle to get to Jen. You'd think, oh, so this is where it's gonna get good, and he's, like, gonna sabotage him, or, like, make Jen think that he's not the one, and then she's gonna turn to him. But Alicia, like, finally is trying to imitate Jen and become Jen. Like, she even saves a sweater that Jen gave her because her clothes were wet, and she, like, buys Jen's makeshift jewelry that she, like, has been trying to sell off of her website, like, on Etsy or something. So just as it was getting interesting and Alicia was becoming Jen and you'd think maybe she's like Jen Sar and was like oh my gosh like you're weird you're a creep uh, and you'd think there'd be confrontation or something no nothing spoiler alert Alicia dies right after that whole thing of Jen being like walking into the makeup store where Jen actually goes like high-end products and sees Alicia and how Alicia styles her hair and her clothes and is like, oh my gosh, those are my earrings you ordered off of my website? Which you'd think, hey, thanks for supporting me for my business. But no, she's like, oh my god, you're so weird. That seems to be her whole theme out of whole book. Wow. Alicia dies literally by running into a dumpster. I'm not joking. That's how she dies. And Remy's grief, um... Carla shows up and she's like, the cosmos wants you to be with Jen. And he's just like, um, I mean, sure, I would love to be with her, but also, like, my girlfriend just died in a bike accident. And this is where the book returns so weird. Like, it does a complete 360, 180, what have you. I mean, like, here's that same scratching sound again. He's like, Alicia? Alicia's ghost? Is that you rummaging in the kitchen? It's this, like, creature thing? Like, all of a sudden, we're in a sci-fi fantasy. So now we're in the alien verse, and there's, like, a glitch in the Matrix. But I was not expecting a creature to, from another timeline, to weave its way into the book. Like, that is not... I literally thought this was, like, a coming-of-age soccer media social influencer kind of story, and that's the whole reason why I wanted the book. So Remy actually is, like, Jake's like, dude, you're probably, like, grieving. Like, I mean, you should probably go see a counselor. And apparently Jake's mom died or was murdered, so he had, like, this recommendation for, like, a anonymous group. So Remy goes and, you know, being Remy, a cardboard character, <laughs> well, he goes. So Remy still, you know, is checking Jen's Instagram.
Instagram, but he's not like as avid now that his partner's gone. He's like sad, and he's like, ugh, this just isn't the same anymore. And Carla is like, oh, now is the time to talk to Jen. Somehow Jen agrees to like go meet him at a bar, and he like catches a glimpse of the creature. So then Jake's like, hey Remy, you know what helped me get through all this? Like, download this app, and like, it ghost generates texts of your loved one, like, throughout the day, like, even if you text him, hey, what's up? But, um, his phone is constantly just saying random things. Like, he posts, puts Alicia's name in as Alicia New. Okay. And he's like, how are you? And she's like, hot dogs are great. And he's like, okay, but what does that mean? Like, I don't know. He actually gets, like, a ghost text from Alicia. Anyways, I just really want to wrap this video up because I've been rambling way too long about it. So, spoiler alert, again, this is the ending of the book. After Jen being not nice to Remy, understandably so, but also kind of not because he seems to be changing and growing up, which is cool. But, I mean, she never showed any interest aside from the concussion couch song. So they do end up hooking up and, like, ghost Alicia's, like, be with her through the text app. So the creature is, like, physical form now. And it attacks Remy. And Remy freaks out. And he's like, what? And he stabs it. And there's black blood everywhere. And he's like, Jake, do you see this black? Apparently they had, like, black paint that they were going to use. And Remy's like, Jake, don't paint the walls black. Like, that's weird. So that's what Jake thought was on the walls. He's like, why did you use the black paint? You told me not to use it. And he calls Carla. And Carla's like, the cosmos has revealed the answers that. I need to call my friend. Turns out it was the girl that tried to hook up with Remy at this emotional support group. Apparently she is the Dean Winchester of the group and she knows all about these things. Carla's like, you have to be open to the possibility of infinite timelines. She, I don't know, calls her friend who comes over and she explains, yeah, that's actually the reason why my um, husband was on his deathbed ranting and raving about me being like this creepy thing. The creature's called, and I'm gonna butcher it, Paramalogus? Paranormagalus? Paranormalagus. <laughs> As it's described in the book, it's like this, like, praying mantis thing with like pincers. Uh, yeah, that thing, pincer-wise. Uh, like, when that thing opens its mouth. It's like a bug. Like Mimic, the movie Mimic, where, like, the bugs, like, can shapeshift into people. Carla's like, oh, what if this thing is manifesting a person that you think is in your way? And so now he's just convinced that it's Horace. Like, in the form of this monster trying to, like nix him. The book has her taking like the goo samples and never touching up on that of what the f*** is it? This is just research for me so that um, when you die I can put it in my statistic log of oh this person died. She leaves an axe and he finally realizes what he's got to do and that is to defeat the entity that is manifesting itself as horror. He doesn't tell Carla the revelation he had for the details of his plan. He just takes the axe and is like, I'm going over the Jets. And she's like, oh my gosh, why? Because it is guiding you to go there? And he's like, yeah, sure. And she's like, I am going with you. It knocks the car over and the room is like, we're going to go this way when I say, because apparently the creature got stuck in the windshield. Like, it killed and took out the driver. And you would think people would see this, but they don't. Apparently, nobody is out on the streets. He's like, Carla, on the count of three, while this thing's stuck in the windshield, we're gonna bolt towards Jen's apartment, and we're gonna go specifically to the right. Well, Carla being Carla does not go to the right. And he's like, Carla, you're going the wrong way! And the hum -hum 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 thing gets her. And, like, Carla's like, help me! And Remy's like, ah, so that is why you were supposed to be here. So you can be the sacrifice so I can get away. Bye! He's like, hi, Jen. And she's like, what are you doing here? You're such a creep. 
So, like, he finds out that horse isn't actually in Tuffy's. Like, you don't have to be scared of me. And she's like, what, what are you going to do with that axe? So why do you have that? And the creature's, like, coming in. Ben's like, oh, my God, I can finally see it. Is that what you were talking about? I just thought you were a weirdo at the beach house. And finally, Remy's got the epiphany of, oh, it's not Horace. Because now, as I see it clearly, clear, my, gla my glasses on, we just, Jen isn't who I'm supposed to be with. Yeah, I, the Horace thing would have made more sense. Because Horace from a different timeline trying to kill or stop Remy before he actually kills the horse in this line, that would, that made more sense. And that's what the book kind of sounded like it was following. But now the whole monster is Jen? Like you slept with her. Oh yeah, they slept with each other. I just forgot which part of the story it was. It was more towards the ending before this whole shit show. This whole thing was supposed to be about him wanting Jen because he's like, her stalker ends up in the fight scene at the end in her bathtub. Remy figures out every time he snaps the creature, <gasps> Jen gets affected or vice versa. So he begins strangling Jen and like trying to drown her. Meanwhile, the creature's like trying to like beat the crap out of him. And he succeeds in killing Jen? The creature just kind of like shrivels up and dies? Like, reflecting on the book and the story as a whole right now, because I'm like, this book went in such a weird direction. <sighs> My final thoughts. It was not a good story. The premise at first was great. We got a suburban couple who are toxic, and they're like very pessimistic about the world, and they're like, let's just like put projective viewpoints on this girl who's living our best life out there with hashtag love and friends and all these great things happening. And really, it took such a weird turn. Like, cool, Alicia was gonna like embody Jen and like become her and like maybe go psycho. But then out of the left field, this creature suddenly exists, even though we, we were hinted towards it in the beach scene. But even that was so slow. The whole book just didn't have a good steady like flow. Like, I wish there was scenes like with Jen's crazy group of friends and like low-key being like, dude, this broke <laughs> cycle. Like, and A B C D E PowerPoint presentation of why that is. And like go from there. But it did. It it turned into like this parallel universe creature ripped itself out of its own timeline to try and kill it just it doesn't make sense and then he kills her at the end and is like oh now i have my third eye opened and i'm enlightened about things and this is where my journey's going from here i don't know what if you guys have read the book i've read so many reviews where they're like i loved it it's like the modern great gatsby it's not it's Give me your thoughts, my loves. I don't know. Yeah. I will be doing more book reviews. Comment, subscribe, like. Ugh.